Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Barbecue Talk. On this video, we're gonna be talking about how do you keep your food warm if you don't have a warming cabinet. So for those of you guys who are really into barbecue, I'm sure that you've seen a lot of videos of behind the scenes stuff from different restaurants and you know them talking about how, how important resting brisket, ribs, pork shoulder is and to that being part of the actual cooking process of barbecue. And when people see that, we're, I think now everyone's really good at knowing all these very specific things like this brand of smoke, or this brand of warmer at what specific temp are all these places resting in at and all this kind of stuff. And it always kind of amazes me that people know this information because, you know, it's just so detailed. But a lot of things aren't, they don't have to be super specific. I mean, obviously there are ranges in things that uh, we would like for things to be in, but in, in terms of it only has to be this one way and do that way is something that, you know, I want people to be a little bit more fluid with because there's not just one way to serve, to hold, to cook barbecue. So for those of you guys who've been following me for a while, uh, you guys know I started in my backyard, uh, which is why I'm wearing my Heisenberg uh, cook shirt. Uh, this is the shirt I, I used to wear all the time when we were doing those pop-ups in my backyard. Um, but you know, I wanted, I thought it was fitting to wear this shirt for the topic today, uh, just because you know when I was starting off, uh, this was before all the detailed videos of you know holding and resting and doing all the stuff and a warming cabinet. All that information came out, uh, or at least I didn't know about it. That was the one thing that was really hard for me back then is trying to serve food and making sure that it stayed hot. Uh, Cause you know, back then I didn't really know how things worked. And uh, so I was trying to cook the food as close as I possibly could to service time so that, you know, I didn't have to worry about my food getting cold. So for example, like on Saturdays, I would serve food at noon. And so I would throw briskets on in the morning, or, or sorry, yeah, in the morning around 11 o'clock or around noon, and then it would be 12 to 14 hour cook. So I would get them off around midnight to two in the morning. Then I would throw ribs and pork shoulder or pork belly on afterwards. And the one thing that I wish I knew at that time was that, you know, there are other ways to keep your food warm because I would love to have been able to cook my briskets you know, take a nap or do something and then jump into the second half of my cook because it was just a lot to take care of, right? It's a lot to do and I'm sure for those of you who try to do bigger cooks or you do uh, events and pop-ups and stuff like that, cook schedule is very, very hard to manage when you don't have the proper equipment to kind of make sure your food is nice um, when you are serving it. So the two methods that I kind of stuck with, well, the first one is I think the most reliable one if you don't have a warmer is obviously your oven, guys. So the one thing I don't want people to do is to stress about thinking like, man, I can't get that good level of barbecue or serve that good level of barbecue just because I don't have a warming cabinet. Ideally, like, you know, that is restaurant equipment. So when you're at home, it's, I mean, I'm sure people who have realized that when you go and try to buy those cabinets, how expensive they are. And, you know, it's not, you know, crazy to think that you don't want to spend that much money. And like I said, a lot of people are really good at finding all the details in terms of barbecue. Uh, and they found that like, oh, all these restaurants are holding their briskets at, you know, 145 or 150 in the warmer. Uh, and, um, you know, sometimes like, you know, our, our, some people's ovens don't go that low and people start freaking out. They're like, what do I do? Like, I don't, my oven doesn't go that low. Like it only goes down to like 160 or 170. Can I still hold my meat at that temp? And, um, you know, it really depends on how long you plan on keeping it in there for, but also, you know, being able to do best with what you got. So for example, if you're trying to, if your oven only goes down to 170 or 180, then, you know, maybe you just kind of turn that oven on at, at its lowest temp and let it run for a little bit. And then before you throw your briskets in there uh, or whatever meat that you got, then you can turn off that oven and just kind of keep it closed and just let it do its thing. Everything is a range and it's like a preference. So there are some places that will keep it at a higher temp. Some people will keep it at a lower temp than what most people use. And just to kind of give you a level of comfort of what I'm talking about in terms of, you know, everyone kind of does their own thing. There are a few barbecue restaurants 
uh, in Texas that are well known that are um, that they will take their briskets uh, off, they'll wrap them up, and they'll throw them in a warmer, and then they'll just let them cook overnight. The second option uh, that I'm sure most people are familiar with is using the cooler, right? Um, you know, some people will take their briskets, wrap them in towels, put them in there, and do all this kind of crazy stuff. You know, I don't think that uh, all that is necessary. And also, I did try doing that when I was younger, and I remember getting yelled at by my mom because I dirtied up a bunch of towels. The one thing that I do want to suggest with a cooler is to make sure that that cooler is warmed up before you put your briskets in there for like one thing that I, I messed up on when I was doing a cook a long time ago I was doing a brisket cook um, I think it was in the middle of winter or maybe it was like late fall anyway it, it was pretty it was pretty cold that day and um, I knew I wanted to rest my briskets inside the cooler so um, you know I took the cooler out right as I was like at the same time that I was ready to rest my briskets. The brisket just didn't turn out the way that I wanted to. It wasn't as hot as I wanted it to be. Um, and so one thing that I would suggest and something that I learned at Terry Black's is, you know, when we had these large catering orders, uh, we would just put everything inside coolers. So um, sometimes what we would do is we would take some hot water and we'd pour it in there and then close the lid and let it just warm up for like an hour. So like while we're packing everything up and all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, the meat would be one of the last things we do. And so we would pour hot water, let it sit. And then when we're ready to pack uh, those coolers in, we would dump out the water, wipe down the inside, and then we would just kind of, you know, stack everything up really close to each other so that it would stay nice and warm. As if you're going to do that, uh, put like usually when you're just cooking things with a warmer or somewhere where you can actually control the temp you know you can I, I would usually put it at like 160 if I'm putting it into a warmer that's about 145 uh, but you know if you're going to put it inside of a cooler that you can't really regulate regulate the temp I would probably decide to put those briskets in when internally they're around 170 175 just a little bit warmer uh, just so you have a little bit more buffer to work with so it, the temp doesn't drop too much. So again guys, you don't have to spend a bunch of money just to kind of keep your, your barbecue warm or to think that like having a war warming cabinet is the only way to come out with the best barbecue. Uh, there are also things like Cambros that you can buy that are used for catering that are a little bit cheaper uh, and so uh, that you can put like uh, like sheet pans and stuff like that inside of too so it is a little more convenient but again it's really up to you how much you're cooking how much you're trying uh, like how much food you're trying to keep warm and all that kind of stuff that really determines you know what type of equipment that you need thank you so much for watching this video uh, be sure to like subscribe share this video with your friends uh, I think that bell whatever that thing is that you're supposed to click on that helps you know that when another video comes out feel free to press that button as well uh, and then any other questions, comments that you may have, leave them down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.